everyone, my name is Kristen and this is Kristen Craves Books. So I'm here to talk about all of the wonderful books that are on my radar for June. I am still a little bit sick, you can probably still hear it. So I don't know how in depth I'm going to go into all of these like I usually do because I don't, just don't think my voice will last. But I will link a Goodreads shelf to all of these books down below. There are also quite a few pre-order campaigns happening this month, so you'll have all the links you need in the description and in a pinned comment. So let's start with June 4th. The first one is For Eats and a Funeral, and this is actually co-written by two really popular YA authors, and they are Frida Vikiamende and Abida Jagadar. This is actually ex-best friends to lovers. These two were best friends growing up, but he went away to boarding school and started to ignore her, and she never understood why. He has to come back to town for a funeral. There is a fire at the Islamic Center and the mayor threatens to just demolish the whole thing. So the two of them have to get over their rivalry to work together to save the center and obviously fall in love. And I know that these are two beloved authors. I've been excited for this one all year long. And the pre-order campaign really, really speaks to me. As I've been sick, it's been like two weeks now, I have comfort movies when I'm sick. I'm sure a lot of us do. For some reason, mine's Thor Ragnarok, um, La La Land, and 10 Things I Hate About You. And 10 Things I Hate About You is like my all-time favorite rom-com. I was a huge Heath Ledger girl. I had his poster with lipstick marks, all that kind of stuff. I was a huge Heath Ledger fan. So the fact that the pre-order campaign is this art print that is clearly inspired by the poster of 10 Things I Hate About You makes you want to pre-order this one right away because I think that that is adorable and it makes sense because when you think of the tropes, the rivals to lovers saying high school, all that stuff, I can see the parallel. And I love that they use that as inspiration because it's one of my favorite movies and I think that the art print is so cute and I know that people love these authors and I have been embracing that I still do love YA contemporary romance once in a while and this looks like a good one. One that I have read, I had an e arc of this from Neck Alley, is Part of My Frenchie by Pharaoh Rochon. I really like Farrah Roshan. Her one series, they were like interconnected romances. I can't remember what they're called at this moment. I thought they, those were fun. This one wasn't my favorite. It was still a three star though. And I think it'll appeal more to dog lovers. I love dogs, but I'm a cat person. And this is following a woman who has a dog boarding business, but is also making treats for dogs. And she's trying to really grow an empire. And she has a live stream, so people go on Instagram and watch this webcam of the dogs that she has boarding with her. And there's like a little love story between her dog and one of the dogs that is a client. And the owner of that dog is put into retirement living and can't take the dog anymore, so her grandson is taking care of it. And it's a poodle. <laughs> and he hates the dog. And they clash right away when they the two of them meet and then they have some other complications but I was never invested in the romance in this one. I really never got over the fact that he hated the dog so much. <laughs> and uh, I just never grew to love him or them together. And there are a few other things I thought were frustrating about it, but I still think it's worth reading. And I'm excited for it to be out in the world to see what other people think about it. And I will still continue to read more from Frere Roshan. So this cover, honestly, and this punny title got me. I think that is so cute. And I do think dog lovers will appreciate a lot of this. There's a really sweet pre-order campaign happening for this one. There are two bookstores participating. I'll leave them linked down below. For every pre-order at one bookstore, Pharaoh Rashan is going to donate $1 to a dog charity. And that is Take Paws Rescue. And then the other bookstore, they themselves are actually going to donate a dollar for every pre-order, which I think is really awesome of them. And that's Rescue Rehome Repeat. So. A great cause, pre-order the book if it's one that's on your radar. You can't go wrong with this pink, cute cover. Next is a YA sapphic romance, and apparently it's slow burn. It is another Rivals to Lovers, which we love around here. And this one is actually called Wish You Weren't Here, and it's by Erin Baldwin. And this has a summer camp setting, so a perfect beach read. I love romances that take place at summer camps, but they're hard to find. And these two girls are both from a small town and they've never gotten along but because the friend group is so small they come to a truce where they will just tolerate each other like they stand on opposite ends of photos they just don't interact too much but they end up being a bunkmates at the sleepaway camp and maybe some feelings start to form there so that sounds really cute super summery and it's perfect for June so I can't wait to hopefully get to that one 
it'll be hard to prioritize romances in June because I am co-hosting the Amazing Readathon and I'm Team Fantasy so I gotta focus on those fantasies but maybe that's one I will read first thing in July because it's just calls to me. Then we have Daughter of the Merciful Deep and this is by Leslie Penelope who is El Penelope who wrote Monsters We Defy which I've been meaning to read for ages and I've heard great things about. This follows Jane who hasn't spoken in 12 years since her family was exiled from her hometown and she now has found peace in this all black town but their safety is being put at risk because they're constructing a dam that promises to wash out the entire community and Jane comes across this strange man who has these abilities that could possibly help except that she knows him. She saw him dead and drowned in rushing water and she's wondering how could he possibly be alive. It says that Jane will journey into a sunken world, a land of gods and unsung myths of salvation and dreams made real. But the floodwaters are rising. To gain the miracle she desires, Jane will have to find her voice again and finally face the trauma of the past. The Gods and the Gamiho by Sophie King is next on my list. And I just really love this cover quite a bit. And I've had a few friends review it on Goodreads and have positive things to say about it. So it's what I'm really curious about. And I love this. Our main character is Kim and she's retired from a life of devouring souls. And it says she is simply put too full. So she was once infamous but now she's retired. She works in a coffee shop as these kind of characters always seem to do. And she has this attraction to a customer who happens to be a annoyingly handsome trickster god. So I'm into that. Obviously we're getting a romance here. So this trickster god is actually a fallen god. He's been exiled and he's forced to live in the mortal realm. So he has nothing to do with his days except visit this attractive barista and what ends up happening is a demon is risen from the underworld and he's given a task to kill it and the famous Nine-Tailed Fox character who happens to be our main character Kim who he's into and he will be reinstated as a god. But they actually decide to team up and it says as the bickering partners track their case down a path of mayhem and violence the god and the gamiho find themselves inescapably drawn to each other. But will the unlikely couple stand together to prevent the apocalypse or will they let their secrets tear them and the world apart? Sounds amazing. There's also a pre-order campaign for this one and I really love this art print so you can just submit your receipt and grab that. For all you Butcher and Blackbird lovers, the sequel Leather and Lark is coming out in June and this is by Bryn Weaver. Haven't read the first one yet, really want to but I know so many people love this. Basically it's a romance between two serial killers who kill other serial killers and the two of them fall in love. So it's Dexter but with a love story. I just wanted to point this one out because I'm sure if you loved the first one you know that this one's coming out in June. But in case you didn't know there is a giveaway that looks pretty epic. So you could win a custom sweatshirt and a custom pop socket as well as a personalized video from the author herself so I think that's kind of fun. And another sequel that you probably don't need me to remind you is coming out is Mirrored Heaven. This is that third book in, I'm not sure the t series is called, but the first book is Black Sun and I feel like everybody's been waiting for this one for such a long time so that does come out at the beginning of June and again I'm just bringing it up so that you are aware of the pre-order campaign for this one. So you get an exclusive gift with purchase that is actually pretty cool. So there's a set of pins it looks like, a sticker, and a signed book plate. So fans of that series check that out because I'm sure if you love that series you already have that book pre-ordered so you might as well get the gift with it in case you weren't aware that that was a thing. Moving on to June 11th, Alexandra Rowland has a new book coming out and this is called Running Close to the Wind. So our main character has accidentally stolen the most important secret in the world and the only way to get rid of it is to flee into the open sea and hopefully sell it and the only person that can help him is his ex and I think his ex is a pirate and they're not happy to see each other but they could profit from this they have to work together but there are a few obstacles along the way of course and it says that there is a new ambassador to the Isle of Lost Souls who's got his eye on Avra's every move Brother Julian, a beautiful and mysterious new member of the crew with secrets of his own and frankly an inconvenient vow of celibacy and the fact that they're sailing straight into a sea serpent breeding season and almost certain doom. So this just sounds like a fun pirate story. I have said this a million times. I want to love pirate stories but I never end up 
actually loving them so hopefully this is one that will work for me I know people love this author and I've been excited about this one for a while give me a sapphic rom-com set in space with sound family and I'm gonna want to read it and this one looks excellent and it is a debut and it's called the stars too fondly by Emily Hamilton it's part space oddity part sapphic rom-com and it tells a tale of galaxy spanning friendship improbable love and found family so this follows Cleo who accidentally steals a spaceship with her best friends and they just want to go over their spaceship and kind of investigate because the entire crew went missing 20 years ago but somehow it starts on its own and there's a hologram of the captain of the ship named Billy and she went missing along with the rest of the crew all those years ago. Cleo thinks that this could be a blessing in disguise because she's always wanted to be an astronaut and things aren't going well on Earth. But it says, as the ship travels deeper into space, the laws of physics start twisting, old mysteries come crawling back to life, and Cleo's initially combative relationship with Billy turns into something deeper and more desperate than either woman was prepared for. So, so many of my buzzwords on that one. Then we have another sci-fi and this is called The Stardust Grail. And you might recognize this author. She wrote The Deep Sky that had some buzz last year and it says it's a thrilling anti-colonial space heist to save an alien civilization. This follows Maya who used to be the best art thief in the galaxy but one of her missions goes wrong. She used to steal artifacts and art and return them to the alien species that they originally belonged to and since she's been in hiding she's like a graduate student and she's living a quiet life but an old friend comes to her with a job she can't refuse which always happens in these kind of retired heist sort of stories but she has to find a powerful object that will actually help save an alien species from extinction. Maya sets on a breakneck quest through a universe teeming with strange life and ancient ruins but the further she goes the more her visions cast a dark shadow over her team of friends new and old. Someone will betray her along the way. Worse yet, in choosing to save one species, she may condemn humanity and Earth itself. What's great about the pre-order campaign for this one is that requesting it from your library also counts. So you send your receipt to the author and she is going to send you a signed book plate and a art print that she had made up. So I think that is great of her. And she says she's also going to randomly select six people to also receive a signed copy of The Deep Sky. So that is exciting. We have some really exciting books coming out on June 18th, starting with Daughters of Calamity by Rosalind M. Lin. Our main character in this one is actually a showgirl in Shanghai. And she is realizing that a lot of the fellow dancers and cabaret dancers are in danger. And actually their faces are being stolen and she's recognizing them on wealthy foreign socialites. So that's kind of horrifying. It's this fighting not just for her own safety, but that of the other dancers, women who have simultaneously been her bittersweet rivals and only friends. She has no choice but to delve into the city's underworld. In this treacherous realm of tangled alliances and ancient grudges, silver armed gangsters haunt every alley. Foreign Playboys broker deals in exclusive back rooms and the power of gods is wielded and traded like one. She will have to become something far stranger and more dangerous than her grandmother ever imagined if she hopes to survive the forces waiting to sell Shanghai's bones. Very intrigued by that one for sure. One I've been seeing around lately probably because of the cover but it also seems to be getting some great buzz is of Jade and Dragons by Amber Chen. So our main character has dreams of being an engineer just like her father but he ends up being murdered and all she has left are her journals that he kept extensive notes in and a pendant, a jade pendant that she stole from the assassin and she goes to the capital city dressed as her brother and she discovers the secrets of her father's death and how deep it goes and she has to go into this engineer guild and she has an unlikely alliance with a prince and it says but to survive she must fight to stay one step ahead of everyone. And when faced with the choice between doing what's right and what's necessary, Ying will have to decide if her revenge is truly worthwhile, if it means going against everything her father stood for. There is a pre-order campaign for this one. There was a really cute enamel keychain, but it's out of stock now, but you could still get the signed book plate and the two art prints, and I think those are great. Next, we have one of my favorite covers of the month, probably. I mean, it's pink, and I just love it so much, and it's called Rake's Fall, and the tagline says, Will you follow me to the end? It's a groundbreaking standalone science fiction epic about two souls bound together from here until the end of time. And this is the same author as The Saint of Bright Doors, which was a popular book that came out last. I think it got nominated for a few awards and everything and definitely one I was curious about. Some stories take more than one lifetime to tell. There are wrongs that echo through the ages, friendships that outpace the claws of death, loves that leave their mark on civilization, and promises that nothing can break. This is one such 
story. Annalyn and Leverett met after the war, but before the peace. They found each other in a torn up nation, peering through propaganda to grasp a deeper truth. And in a demon haunted wood, another act of violence linked them and propelled their souls on a journey throughout the ages. No world can hold them, no life can bind them, and they'll never leave each other behind. But their journey will not be easy. In every lifetime, oppressors narrow the walls of possibility, shaping reality to fit their own needs. And behind the walls of history, the witches of the red web swear that every throne will fall. So obviously this is one of those love stories that takes place throughout the ages. We've been getting more and more of these lately and I'm always really intrigued by them. So this one sounds fantastic. Lots and lots of baseball romances Lately, I can think of quite a few that came out this year, but I love the cover of this one and it's by an author who I already really like and this is The Art of Catching Feelings by Alicia Thompson. So her main character is going through divorce the day after she signs her divorce papers. She goes to this baseball game, has a few funny beers, starts to heckle the love interest in this and it's to the point that he's really upset and she feels terrible so she goes and apologizes to him through social media, but he doesn't actually identify her as a person that was heckling him. He thinks she's just a fan that felt bad for him and is apologizing. And so the two of them start talking back and forth. They have a good connection. And she actually starts working for the team. And she doesn't know how much longer she can keep this lie that she was the heckler going. So that makes me a little bit nervous. But I like this author and I'm into baseball romances right now. So this does have potential. It feels like I personally have been waiting for this next book for years because it's Little Rot by Quakey and Mezzi, who is one of my favorite authors, auto by author for me. I adore them. I love the range they have. You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty, one of my favorite messy romances, and this is something different from them, but everything I've read from them is completely different. I'm just so in awe of their mind. So this is about five friends trying to outrun and outmatch a powerful underground world, and I just know that a Quakey and Mezzi is going to write the complications of friendship so well because the way that they just write authentic relationships in general always hits for me. It says one weekend, the elite underbelly of a Nigerian city, a breakup that starts a spiral, a party that goes awry, a tangled web of sex and lies and corruption that leaves no one unscathed. Little Rot is a whirling journey through the city's dark side, told through the eyes of five people, each determined to run from the twisted powers out to destroy them. I think that's all we need to know. We need to know that it's written by Quickie and Messy, so you know it's gonna be brilliant and you're gonna think about it for years afterward. And about friendship, I think this is going to be incredible. And oh yeah, this says they visit a sex party hosted by his best friend. He makes a decision that will plunge them all into chaos, brutally upending their lives. Interesting. With each novel, with each creation, a Quickie and Messy shows their genius as a storyteller. 100%, completely agree. As a visionary force who has created a thrilling tale of sex, power, and deviance in Little Rot, you won't be able to look away. Oh, I'm so freaking excited for that. You know I haven't been the biggest thriller reader lately, but an author that I always turn to is Wanda M. Morris, and she has a new one coming out, and it's called What You Leave Behind. And this is a powerful, haunting thriller following a lawyer who, after the mysterious disappearance of a local landowner and the death of his sister just months before, uncovers a conspiracy that dates back to Reconstruction and persist in half of the United States today. I like to go into my thrillers, especially from an author who I know I'm gonna like, knowing next to nothing, and this sounds great. I know I love this author, so I want to put this on your radar because I think she's underrated. The author of episode 13, which I know a lot of people read last year, has a new book coming out, and this one's really calling to me, and it's called How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive by Craig DeLuey. This is a darkly humorous horror novel. I like my horror to have humor and be campy once in a while that sees a famous 80s slasher director set out to shoot the most terrifying horror movie ever made using an occult camera that might be and probably is demonic. Oh, I love that. That sounds so good. Okay, June 25th, last date, four more books. And the first one is Saints of Storm and Sorrows by Gabriella Buba. And this is a fiercely imaginative Filipino-inspired debut fantasy. A bisexual nun hiding a goddess-given gift is unwillingly transformed into a lightning rod for her people's struggle against colonization. It says that it's for fans of The Poppy War, which I really liked, and The Jasmine Throne, which is one of my favorite things ever, so you don't need to tell me much more than that. So our main character, Maria, has been living a double life. During the day, she is Sister Mary, she is a nun, and at night, she is a powerful storm chaser. It says that the goddess of storms demands vengeance, and she will sweep aside anyone who stands in her way. 
I've been reading to read something by Tara Sims for so so long but this is probably the one I'll get to first because it appeals to me the most it's called We Shall Be Monsters. Frankenstein meets Indian mythology in this twisty darkly atmospheric fantasy where the horror is not the monsters you face but the ones you create. Our main character's sister dies and she's determined to bring her back to life even if that means that her sister's soul isn't able to go through the cycle of reincarnation and while going through this ritual to bring her back to life her sister's soul actually gets trapped in this wraith-like spirit who wants revenge and will kill anybody that wronged them in life and with each kill they get more and more powerful. So our main character is condemned as a witch and she's imprisoned but she is saved by these two people who will let her free on one condition. She has to bring back the fallen crown prince. But what actually happens is she brings the wrong boy back to life and the two of them I think have a romance and have to try and resurrect the real crown prince while also trying to take down this spirit that is her sister. So very interesting. Lots of layers, lots going on in that one. Definitely intrigued. We have a horror that I know is going to haunt a lot of people's dreams because for some reason I know a lot of people who are really creeped out by eyeballs. I'm okay with eyeballs. For me it's teeth. But if you're really scared of eyeballs and you want to be scared this summer, here's a good one. It's called The Eyes Are The Best Part by Monica Kim. So this one is very, very weird. Our main character's father leaves the family and she is kind of forced to pick up the pieces and her mother tells her that if you eat fish eyes it could bring good luck and maybe her father will return so she starts to do that but now she dreams of eating human eyes instead. Instead of her parents getting back together her mom starts dating a man named George who has an Asian fetish and he's got these blue eyes that she's obsessed with eating and I think she starts to eat blue eyes. She seems to have a fascination with blue eyes and she gets more and more ravenous as it goes on. So interesting for sure. And it is about a young woman unraveling from feeling for too long because of race, because of misogyny, completely unseen. It's also a story of an immigrant family falling apart and trying to find their way back to each other. So we'll see. And then last but not least, Ashley Poulston has a new romance coming out at the end of June. It's called A Novel Love Story. Our main character in this one, it seems she was left at the altar and she has turned to reading romance books and those kind of happily ever afters. And she is going to a renew retreat, but her car breaks down and she ends up in this small town that is right out of her favorite romance series. All the characters are there, but it seems frozen in time and she thinks that she has to be part of this town's happily ever after and there's a grumpy bookstore owner and they have a romance so that sounds so fun. It says that she is beginning to think the town's happily ever after might just be intertwined with her own. That sounds really cute and obviously appeals to all of us romance readers. I would love to be in a romance with Mr. Darcy. Who are we kidding? So really excited for that one. And that is it. I'm sure I missed a few so let me know which ones are on your radar, which one I missed, which one you're most excited to read. And hopefully the next time you see me, my voice will be a little bit better and stronger. I cannot wait for the amazing readathon, so I really want to be like in full health for that. So we will see. Cross our fingers. Thank you again for watching. Thanks for your support. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye for now.